Hey everyone, Eric here. And today I want to share with you a really cool extension called Fredo Portrait that will help you go from 3D to 2D in just a couple of clicks. <laughs> Okay, so what's the point of going from 3D to 2D? Most people in SketchUp are used to going from 2D to 3D. And I want to share with you here in just a minute a use case for why you might want to go the opposite direction, especially if you want to bring in something specific as, uh, in this case, I'm using people as an example, but it could be entourage, furnishings, plants, something that you want to have a lot of and it needs to be specific that you can get an angle just right in 3D and then turn it into a 2D so you can make a face me component. So I think uh, you gotta trust me here. I will, let's, instead of talk, let me just show you exactly what I mean. So let me get out of this view here. Let me pop over to some steps. So I've got this staircase here. And the reason why I'm using a person as an example is because I was looking for some good 3D people and I found some cool silhouettes of people walking and standing, but I've got this really unique stadium stair set as part of my park. And what I wanted to do was to find somebody not just sitting down, but somebody who's kind of reclining. And I want to be able to not just find somebody who's sitting on the furniture the right way, but I want to be able to get them at the right angle so that I can show my scene in both um, from different angles. So what I want to do is kind of show you the old school process, and then I'll show you the new school process. So I want to go take a step back and look at how might I turn, like, for example, this woman into a 2D component like these people so that not only is my model kind of light and I don't have all these polygons, but also so that I could use her maybe again in layout or I can use her in some of my other models and put her in my library um, for whenever I have sort of a similar stadium stare condition. Starting off to the side, I want to think about the angle that I want her in. So in this case, I already had done this here. I'm going to delete that. We're going to do this together. Let's go back here and say, now that I know what I want to do with her, I can either get her from the side or I can get her from the front. Let's say that like having her sit in the front is cool. So I could do a screenshot, but then I'd have to go into Photoshop and remove the background. So what I'm going to do is go file, export 2D graphic. And I'll just save this to my desktop to save time. I'll call her woman, doesn't really matter because I'm going to change the name of it. Check my size, just make sure that it's not too, too big. Um, maybe do something like uh, 900 by, I don't know, maybe a little higher. Okay, we're just, uh, we're going to see if this works. We're going to click OK, and I'm going to save that. And then she should show up on my desktop. I'm going to grab her as a PNG texture, and I'm going to copy her into my window and scale her up. In this case, I've got to do a little bit of rotating. I'm going to go 90 in this direction, and I'm going to go 90 again in this direction. So I'm kind of generally looking at her at the same angle, and I need to make sure that I scale her so that she's about the same size. Probably helps if I line her up. You can see why this process needs an extension. Now, if you're doing this once or twice, it's not a big deal. But if you're going to do this a lot, you may want the help of, like I said, that extension. We're going to do that in just a second. I'm going to get her about the same size there. I'm going to call that good. Now, the problem is, is that when I exported this view, I got this frame around it. So I'm going to go in here. I'm going to explode. And then I'm going to draw a frame that just has just her in it. Of course, if I was doing this proper, I would maybe even trace around her. Uh, group that, delete it. Let's see here. Hide those edges. Make it a component. Woman sitting. Give it a name. Set component axis. Set it for the middle. And choose always face camera and create. If I did this right, I have now a woman who, who now I can place in my model. It's a 2D component instead of this 3D one. Of course, the advantage of 3D is I can get it from different angles. But if I know I'm going to capture my view in this angle, now I don't have a person that's 30, 40,000 polygons. I have one that's just four polygons. It's just a 2D image. And if I place her over here and just kind of set her maybe where I want to be, where I want her to be, I think from a distance, you can probably tell a little bit when I have my ambient occlusion on because you get those inner um, you get those inner shadows. So even if I just turn that off for a second, 
you'd see that you know from a distance you probably can't tell if you're looking straight on. There's a little bit of a difference, but not too bad. So the point is is, uh, is that now that was the manual way to do it. I spent about three minutes doing that process. So let's go ahead and see how can I make this process go a little bit quicker using this extension called Fredo Portrait, which I'm going to put in a link to it in the description. It's a free extension. If you know Fredo's extensions, then you know that he does some really cool, really powerful stuff. And once you've installed it, you can come over here into Tools. There's two places to find it under Fredo Collection and Fredo Portrait. If you have any of Fredo's other extensions, you'll find those there too. You can also, if you're a toolbar person, you can go Tool Palettes and then you can find it here, Fredo Portrait. Now I've got it open. So this is the, the icons. Now I don't really know icons that well. I kind of learn just which buttons I need to work with. So what I want to do is click the second one, which is called Portrait Studio. So again, if you're coming over here into Fredo Collection, you can go Fredo Portrait and you can launch Portrait Studio from there as well. So Portrait Studio means that what I want to do is actually, I kind of missed a step. I want to select the person or the object that I want to turn into a portrait, which is basically Fredo's way of saying a 2D face me component. So I want her to be my portrait. So I'm going to click also the second icon down is Portrait Studio to launch the sort of editor, the configure. And you can see what it's done is because I've selected her, it's already got her in the window. It's not trying to make a portrait of everything. I didn't have to hide my background. I didn't have to move her off to the side like I did. It's just her isolated. So I'm going to click on this far right icon, this last one that's got a picture of Mark's head. I'm going to zoom in here so you can see a little bit better. If you click on Mark's head, this is basically where it says generate a 2D component. There's some other cool features in here, but I don't want to mess with it unless I need to. I'm just going to click on that one because this is all I think I need. And then I'm going to firstly double check a couple of settings. Is she have a transparent background? She does. Good. Do I want to enable parallel projection? I might. I might not. Let's try it. So parallel projection will just get rid of that perspective distortion. I think that's probably something I didn't do when I did her the first time manually. Give her a name. I'm just going to say woman sitting front. This will help me determine which one this is. If I want to do this from multiple angles, you can set the access point. So in this case, bottom, middle, bottom is usually a safe plot, but you know, if she's sitting, maybe you want it middle, middle, it's up to you. And then we've got some options. Now, remember I brought that in as a full image and then I had to crop around her. Basically I brought in the full image and I cropped. And if I wanted to do silhouette, I would have had to bring the freehand tool and traced around her. And this is what's really actually the coolest thing about this extension is I can hit Silhouette External Contouring. So it's going to trace her automatically. I'm going to select that option and that's it. Everything else is default. Hide edges, yes. Place 2D component, yes. So when I'm ready, just click Generate Component. What it's going to do, you can see it's generating the image, it's contouring, it's cutting it out, it's creating a component. All the steps that I just did manually, it's doing it automatically and I place her there. For some reason, she came at a different scale. It must have been a setting that I didn't get right, but that's okay. I will just manually scale her. And you can see that it probably has to do with her legs sitting like that. It's probably have to do with the camera angle that I had. So I'd want to test that out and try it a couple of times. Maybe what we can do is do that since it was so quick. We can sort of do this one more time, see if we can get a better camera angle for her. So come over here. Um, make sure that parallel projection is on and do that same thing. We're going to give her the same name and do this version two. And because this is so fast, if for some reason you screw up or you want to change angles like I just did, that's okay. We'll just try this again and we'll say, you know what? I actually like, I think that's a little bit better. What's cool about this is that too, I can leave her um, as a photorealistic person or I can sample the people that I already have in my model and paint bucket right on top. And again, same thing from a distance. It looks like she is sitting in that space and that's cool because then I can just kind of hide or get rid of those. And again, I think the scale is a little bit too small, but there you go. You get the idea. It takes a little bit of practice to kind of get as far as get that position and that get that angle exactly as you want. But let's do this one more time because I am just having too much fun. So I'm going to unhide her. I'm going to hide that one. And this time what I want to do is switch to like a side view. 
so that I can cut a section through my model. So I'm going to do that same thing. Portrait Studio, come over to Create 2D Component, call this Woman Side or something like that, and keep that contouring on, parallel projections on, all that stuff looks good, generate the component. So we can get that same component from different angles for uses in different parts of the model or depending on whether we want to show it in elevation or something like that. Again, hide that, maybe add a section. Where are my section planes? There they are. And I can come over here and say something like align view. And then that makes more sense for the fact that I've got this person sitting at this particular angle. And I love that I can, I have that customization. I have the 3D person, but I know where, how I'm going to sort of tell the story. I know how I want to tell my story. And so I have that option to get my people exactly as I want them. And again, this isn't just for people. This could be for trees or this could be for furnishings or anything else that you want to go from a very heavy 3D object to something a little bit lighter that then is maybe more versatile uh, to add to your library for future use. So I'm going to stop there. Again, it is a Fredo portrait, which is a free extension, and you can find that. I think you need what's called libfredo. It's basically a library that all of Fredo's extensions use to launch Fredo. So if you don't have that libfredo, check that as well. And um, let me know, have you used this extension? Do you feel like that's useful to go from 3D to 2D? Would you rather just have a bunch of 3D people and just kind of deal with the extra geometry in your model? Um, for me, I feel like, like there's advantages to both, but what I love more than anything is having the choice, being able to say, if I know that this is what I want, this angle, I want them 2D, I know how to do that. That's the most important thing I want you to take away from today's video. So I'm gonna leave you there. I'm gonna say thanks as always for watching. If you learned something new, go ahead and give us that thumbs up. If you haven't already subscribed, so you get all the latest videos coming right to your inbox as soon as they're released. With that, I'm gonna say thanks and see you next time.